Hey, what's up everybody? I am back from Adobe Max. I had an amazing time and thanks for everyone that came out. And I decided to do a quick Photoshop tutorial on one of the features I didn't get a chance to show. And I'm gonna dedicate this particular tutorial to Miss Brooks' class. If you guys are watching or if you're seeing this on the replay, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for being fans, and more importantly, thanks for your love for all things creative and of course the Adobe tools that you guys are using in your class to become better artists and photographers and designers and videographers and all the cool things that you guys are getting to do. So with that, with that said and without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. I've got an image here that, that I want to use and I want to go ahead and remove the railing. The railing is distracting to me and I would just love to have Jesse just against the cityscape that's out of focus and remove the background. But in order to do that, typically if I were, I could clone it out, but if I were to use Content Aware Fill, it would actually start to pick up some of his sweater and pull in some of that. So let's try it the old way. So if I were to go ahead and make a selection, Let's just make the selection and I'm just going to carefully go around his sweater and hold down the shift key. And I'm just using a lasso. Nothing special. The lasso has been around for years. And with the shift key held down, it will add this to the selection. Now, if I weren't, if I were just using the regular content aware fill and hit delete and hit content aware fill, it's inevitably going to bring in bits and pieces of things that I don't want. Now, I did a better job than it did last time, but over here on the left, you can see it's bringing in some of the sweater. Over here on the right, it's bringing in some of the sweater. Normally, it brings in some of the sweater right there, but that's not what I want. So let's undo that. And instead, let's go to the brand new Con Content Aware Fill workspace. Now, when I go to the Content Aware Fill workspace, typically, the green color by default indicates the sampled area. So you would have something like that. To, to my brain, it works better if I switch it to the excluded areas. In other words, these are the areas that I want to exclude from the content aware fill. So in other words, if I were to grab my brush now and start painting, I want to exclude the sweater. So see how that, again, to me, makes a little bit more sense. I want to exclude all of this. I don't want it to pull in any of these areas. And of course you can paint all day long because that's not really affecting what the image out, what the image is gonna do. You're just telling it, don't touch any of that. Use everything else that's not green to pull into that area. Now when I click okay, and it will output this to a new layer, and by the way, you can use color ad adaptation to kind of make your blend or your content aware fill a little bit better. I'm gonna say high instead of default. And you also get a preview, which is kind of nice. You get to see what it's going to do. So with the default, uh, with none, I get to play around with the color adaptation to see what that's going to do. And that's kind of giving me a better cityscape effect, even on very high. So again, um, this is extremely cool to be able to do this and see the preview before you click OK. Now when I click OK, that's it. That's my content aware fill with out pulling in any of the sweater or any of the objects around your image or your selection that you don't want. So that was one of the features I didn't get a chance to show in the keynote. Um, and with that said, I want to also give a shout out to my, my friend Kevin was there. Kevin was actually at Max this year and Kevin got this snapshot, which uh, we can't blame the photographer. We can't blame Kevin because the lighting in the in the auditorium was just horrible. It's just this blue magenta, ho horrible lighting. So it's, it's going to be hard to get a good photo out of this. But we don't want to let Kevin go out like this. And KJ is probably too busy to retouch this because KJ is making, you know, tons of money now doing photo retouching. So KJ, if you had time, I know you would do a good job on this, but... Uh, I'm going to help Kevin out. And with that said, let's dive in. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to a smart filter layer. So I'm just going to basically convert this background into a smart object. That way, anything I do to it, any filters I run on it, I can undo or I can change or I can go back to it. All right. So now that I've done that, one of the first things I love to do when, it's, when, it, when I'm messing with color and I'm just trying to get it better, I know I can't get it perfect in this case, but I'm gonna go up to my filter menu and I'm gonna come down to the camera raw filter. When I go to the camera raw filter, 
that will show me all the new features. <laughs> all right, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started. When I go to the camera raw filter, one of the first things I look for is the white balance eyedropper. With the white balance eyedropper, what I would typically be looking for in the photo is something around 18% gray or something gray. Something, if I can't find anything gray or should, that should have been gray, if I can't find anything that should have been gray, then I would look for something that should be black or should be white. Now, I know that this is a carpet. So there's a carpet running down the aisle that Kevin's standing on. I also know that that's cement. That's the cement that the carpet's not covering because they didn't carpet everywhere. So that cement's probably gray because that's what color cement is. All right, so let's go ahead and click on that and see what happens. And that starts to bring back the colors. If I click over here, it starts to bring it back a little bit more. Again, I, I, I will never expect this to be perfect because it wasn't taken under perfect lighting. But we can certainly do a do Kevin you know, justice or, or more justice as opposed to what was currently, um, currently photographed. So I can click here all day long and click on different spots. It's really not gonna make a huge difference on things that should have been gray, but it, it will at least get me part of the way there. Now, another thing we can do, oh, making it worse. All right, another thing we can do is we can also click on the Adobe Sensei Powered Auto feature. So in other words, let auto try and figure out what some of this should look like. And if I don't agree, I can always change the sliders or undo it. So I'll click auto and eh, 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 not really crazy about that, but I can adjust it. I can say bring back in maybe some more of that magenta or less of that magenta. Again, I'm not expecting this to be perfect, but we're going to go ahead and give it our best shot. So let's bring up the contrast a bit more. Let's bring up the exposure a bit more. Let's bring Kevin out. Now, this, this ceiling is going to just completely fall apart. That's going to get all grainy and, and all that. And that's okay because we don't care about the ceiling. We care about Kevin. So let's go ahead and bring up that exposure a little bit more, bring up the contrast a little bit more. And uh, the, the warm tone is as far up as it can go. So again, I'm not expecting this to be perfect because the lighting conditions weren't perfect. But I might dial this in to where the skin tones just come out just a little bit more. And I know that that is just not gonna be perfect. Now, the next thing we can do is go over to the detail tab. We can, of course, bring up some of that noise reduction to kind of get, get that ceiling and even Kevin just a little smoother there without some of that noise from the low light. And we'll say that we're gonna do it right about there. Now, we are in the camera raw filter, so I don't have necessarily the crop tool because you would, do, you would do your crop on your final image. But I'm gonna say that this is a good starting spot. Now, let's click OK. That will do it as a smart filter layer. If I ever want to go back to it, I can double click and get right back to those same settings. And I can see the shadows, maybe bring those down a bit more, bring the blacks up a little bit. So I can always get back to it and continue working on it. But right off the bat, we're already in a better spot than we were before. So this is our before and this is our after. So it gets better really quick. All right, so now we're not done though. That, that, that brought out Kevin a bit more but we can do better. So remember when I drug the warming, like the, the temperature all the way over, it was as far over to the, to the warm tones as it could go? Well, then why not just duplicate the layer? Let's double the effect. And I'm gonna take the duplicate, and since it's got, it's a smart object, it's basically the same container, the same filter on it, I'm gonna rasterize the duplicate. So I'm gonna go to my layer menu, we'll come down to uh, rasterize, we'll rasterize a smart object, so now it's just a layer again. So at this point, we have our base layer, which is our foundation, our original, it's untouched. It's, it's basically a non-destructive edit. This one I am gonna make destructive. I'm just gonna run that filter one more time and that will just go crazy. That'll just blow it away. It's just way too much, but that's okay because it's on a layer. I can always dial it down. And more importantly, I can use a mask to hide it. So I'm just gonna hold down my option or alt key, add a layer mask and that will hide it behind that mask. Because then what I can do is grab my brush tool and I can uh, switch the colors and I can brush. Now it's gonna be too much. I'm gonna dial it down, but this is gonna be too much. We're gonna bring in, we're gonna lighten him up way too much. I know it's too much. Don't complain, it's too much, we know. Kevin, don't worry, we're gonna hook you up. Just bring that in. And then, now that I see how much that is, that's, which is way too much, let's go ahead and dial it back down. All right, we dial it down to just as much as we need. So we're just lowering the opacity of that second layer, which is masked. 
instead of him being in the shadows, now we just added a little bit of light to him, which is his own self, his own lighter self. So we just added that in. Now at this point, uh, we could keep trying to tweak it. We could go in, for example, and we can add an adjustment layer to the colors if we want to keep tweaking them. So let me go to my adjustments. We can go in and say that, hey, I would love to add a, what do I want? I want a hue saturation adjustment. Yeah, there we go. Add a hue saturation adjustment because what this will allow me to do is go into individual colors. So I can say in the magenta, for example, or the blues, I can say, let's maybe desaturate those blues a bit and just kind of make it almost like a monotone, bring them up a little bit more. And we do the same thing for the magentas. Let's bring down those magentas a bit. Yeah, let's just dial that in right about there. All right, and again, this is, we're just playing. This is all an adjustment layer. You can always go back and say, no, 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 I don't like it. I want to go ahead and back, go back to change it. Now, last but not least, the thing that I would do is, again, make Kevin the star. This is all distracting stuff. We don't need any of that. So we're going to go to our crop tool, and we're just going to simply pull this down because Kevin's the star. And you're, you're, I'm in the rule of thirds. So it's basically saying all these intersections are your important parts. So do we really need this guy leaning down? Do we really need any of this stuff over here? Probably not. Let's just make Kevin the focus. All right, we should bring that right up there. There we go. So now he's the focus of the shot. And there we are. So Kevin, thanks for attending, Max. Miss Brooks, thanks for uh, giving me time in your class. And thanks, thank you guys. And I hope you continue to be successful with all your endeavors for uh, learning graphic design, learning uh, web design, learning animation, learning video. The, the world is yours right now from a creative standpoint. So you guys can go out and get the messages out in a creative way. Every big company is looking to, to young talent. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep being inspired by the things around you and the people around you. Hang around with positive people. Go out and do cool things. And you'll one day you'll be doing your own keynote and you'll be up there on the big stage remembering this day and you'll be up there uh, showing people very cool things, hopefully. So with that said, thanks everyone and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye everybody. Bye, Miss Brooks. See you.